Hello, hello, hello. So um, today I wanted to come on here and share a little bit about why exactly do I focus on women? Um, I'm sure someone somewhere wants to know um, the context behind all this talk about women and um, purpose and all of that and healing and um, trauma and racial trauma. I mean, I'm all about women. Um, when I first started uh, our nonprofit called Elevate Her International, get the name Elevate Her, um, you know, it was really about women. So there's a reason why. And I wanted to share a little bit, like I said, yesterday, I tried to get on here and um, for some reason it did not work. So there's something about a do-over. So this is my do-over in um, communicating with you guys and sharing a little bit of the work that God has um, put on my heart um, geared around women. So I would like to keep these videos for to about 10 minutes and under. So let's get started. So the first thing is why women? What exactly is it about women? Um, today I posted about um, being a black woman and that's the first reason. I'm a woman, I'm a black woman. I'm a blackity black woman. And um, I love that. But if you all know, um, for those of you who are black women or for those of you who study um, black women or married to another black woman, you know, um, that the, our social context in society um, affords us a story, affords us experiences. Um, and there are great things with that experience and there are also challenges with that experience. And so for me, as I was um, moving my way through ministry, I knew that my work and the work that I do and the work that God um, has impressed on my heart had to do with women. Um, yesterday I shared about, you know, our purposes oftentimes has something to do with our experience in life. And it does, and it does. There's no doubt that the work that you are doing right now has something to do with what you've been through, whether good, whether hard, whether easy, whether difficult, whether how you grew up. Um, something in your upbringing, in your experiences have shaped you. And for me, um, being a woman, being a black woman has shaped me in so many um, remarkable ways that I wanted to focus my work on women. The other thing is that because of our social construct or social context in society, you know, women face um, many challenges, you know, um, we often find that, you know, because of patriarchy, because of sexism and misogyny, you know, women um, are often left with, um, especially black women to be at the bottom of society's barrel. And so, um, and so women sometimes come to me feeling less confident um, women are sometimes seen as secondary roles. Um, we're never called to be the presidents to be, uh, I mean, in our own country, we have never had a woman president. And so, um, women are never called to take lead in different, um, you know, uh, organizations where they, they have to make the decisions and they have to be the main, um, decision decision makers um you know oftentimes i mean growing up as a black woman i've heard so many things i mean so many negative messages you know messages that i was not a leader you know oftentimes i'm you know criticized more harshly than others um oftentimes you know i'm told to you know calm down or you know i'm too loud I, you know, I mean, all kinds of st stuff. I mean, even to smile more. If I got a penny for every time someone told me to smile more, you know, the rest of the saying. I mean, every single time, um, you know, I would hear different messages, you know, um, and women are always seen as to be put in a position to be taught and not one to be teaching. And so oftentimes, and, and that has a lot to do with society, um, the context we are placed in society. Um, you know, we are often overlooked. 
Um, we are often talked over. Um, and we are often less lastly, um, likely to ask for a raise or even ask to be paid more. Um, in society, we always find ways to tell women that we're not enough, you know? We need to be a certain criteria. We need to be a certain level. We need to be a certain type. We need to be um, white man, a, a white man, for, in order to to be acceptable. You know, sometimes that's what it feels like. We need to be male and we need to be white in order to be fully accepted um, and to, to be given a chance or to be given a seat at the table. Um, we are often called to dim our light. Um, so that others can feel comfortable. And I'm not just talking about, um, you know, men or white men or anything. I'm talking about all society where we fit under these, this umbrella of patriarchy or sexism and misogyny, where we all, um, I know for me as a black woman, you know, I've always, I, I often feel this weight, this weightiness of not being enough and and not just men communicate that, even women, even my own um, people um, would often um, share for me to dim my light so that they can feel comfortable. Um, and we are often um, always called to squelch the spirit of God that is in us, um, which makes it hard for women to dream and live and, um, and to live a life of purpose. So for me, when I felt all of these disparities, when I felt the weight of what it meant to be a woman, to be a Black woman, and God had started elevating me, God had allowed me to go to, um, to seminary, started a nonprofit, and I was being invited to different um, um, seats at the table. I was being invited to take a part of making decisions. I knew, I just knew that I needed to focus my work on women. I knew I needed to do for other women what God had done for me. I knew I needed to create spaces and opportunities for women to grow, thrive, develop, for women to heal. The first work that I started out with in ministry is about trauma healing for women. And so um, that's the why. That's the why behind my work, um, to tell women that um, they are enough to tell women that they don't have to dim their light, to tell women that they don't have to be um, more than enough. You are enough. You are good just the way you are. God created you um, for a unique purpose, and he did it on purpose. And so I want women to know that. I want women to know that they belong at the table. Um, I want women to know that every seat... Um, in um, organizations, in society, every place in, the, in society, you belong, even the church, especially the church. You belong in the church. You belong to have a seat at the table in the church in every area of the church, okay? I will say that again. In every area of the church, you have a seat. You have a role to play. You are important and you are necessary. Your voice matters and you belong. And so that's the that's the work I want to do with women, um, especially Black women, to let them know that um, you are necessary. And so um, let me know if you have any questions or any feedback. Um, let me know if you have um, any thoughts or comments. Um, God is expanding me in this area of speaking even more into women's lives. I will um, continue to share more and create spaces for you for you to learn or use my services. So um, get, go to my website, Jula Prevalon, D-I-E-U-L-A Prevalon.com and send me a message and let me know if I can help. Okay. Enough. I have taken enough of your time. Thank you for dropping by and thank you for listening. Let me know what you think and let me know if you have any questions. Bye guys.